Well, this afternoon, some female appointees are defending President Okufuado's comment. Communications Minister Esla Usukufu, Local Government Minister Haji Alima Mahama, and Foreign Affairs Minister Shelia Yokobotwe have reasons why they believe what they see as President Okufuado's call to action is being taken out of contest to score what they call cheap political point. Well, let's start with a direct response to what former Gender Minister um, uh, Nana Oyelitha has been saying about this, uh, uh, about the comments that the president made. Uh, Esla Uswe Kufu has been responding. Apparently, Nana, Nana Oyelitha has actually been speaking on a media, a media, a different media platform on which he said, she says that she wept when she heard what the president said because she appears to be one of those who think that the president shouldn't have said what he said. There's a response from Esla Uswe Kufu for her on that. The president is also a UN gender advocate. He understands the issues. A U. AU gender champion. He understands the issues. He chose his words deliberately to provoke us to action. And so if this comment will reignite the dead women's movement in Ghana, and I say the women's movement in Ghana is dead, then maybe that's, oh, I'm saying that it is dead. It is dead. Yes. The kind of energies which we, we took to our work, and I was part of the group that went around the country um, working on selling the domestic violence uh, bill at the time with Hajia around the whole country. We didn't sit in our offices and hoped and expected that the bill would be passed into law. We actually went on the ground and affected and effected change in attitudes towards the law, worked tirelessly around the length and breadth of this country to let people understand the, the, the benefits that the, 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 uh, the protection that the bill will provide for all of us if passed into law. We need that same activism and dynamism behind the affirmative action law. It is not just up to parliament or cabinet to pass it. We need a groundswell of opinion on the ground behind it to push it into reality. We need that support, and that is what the president is challenging us to do. So instead of vilifying him, we should be thanking him for waking us up from our slumber. Many who have been in the forefront of activism are tired, they are burnt out. Some who have now found their voice don't have any clue what gender advocacy is about because they don't understand the fundamentals. We are standing on the shoulders of a long line of women who have fought to increase the space a little bit for us. I've been attacked physically. What did I do? I only went to Kantamantu to encourage the women there to go and register to vote without getting your name on the vo a voter's register. You can shout all you like. You will never be able to make your thumb count. They were being prevented from being uh, uh, registered, and I went there to encourage them. And NDC MP Nilante Van Der Poy organized thugs to come and attack me there. Why? For trying to give be a voice for the voice, uh, voiceless women in Kantamantu. That was my, my, uh, my crime. And many of the so-called women activists who've now found their voice, you know what they said? Serves me right. I deserve it because I was their political opponent. Oh, yes. Nano Yelita and the rest. None of them ever thought there was anything wrong with what had happened to me because I was their political opponent. No problem. I have a thick skin. I can take it. I don't want that to happen to any other woman who is seeking political power in this country. Let the buck stop with us. Let us be the ones who will be the last generation of women who are verbally or physically attacked for daring to seek political office and elective office. Go out on the beat and do the house to house with them. Project their candidature. Encourage the females 
on the ballot, uh, on the voters' register to vote for female candidates. Then we'll be making progress. As for the armchair feminism, it doesn't change anything. It may make for nice sound bites. But after the next election, if we are not careful, we will still be hovering around 13 or 15 percent. And what would we have achieved? Nothing. If we don't increase the number of female members of parliament, the president will have a very small pool of people to choose from because the majority of his ministers must come from parliament by law. So if we want more women ministers, let's get more women elected into parliament. And we all have a task to accomplish in that direction. We've done it all, like Haji has said. Communication Minister Esla also Okufu there. That's her position on this matter. For Adi Alima Mahama, uh, the president's comment was not a faux pas in communication. She believes the president was bold in speaking the truth. And we know the circumstances in Accra, the barriers, the traditional barriers, the cultural barriers. But we are saying that there the is opportunity for women to rise above those challenges. For example, I always take people on when they blame the woes of Africa on colonialism. It's about time we move forward. We don't have to keep talking about colonialism on us. Yes, it's a fact, it happened. Or slave trade, it happened. But should we just relax because of that and say, to that extent, doors have been closed to us? No. Nobody will move forward without getting up and opening the doors. So my, I'm telling the youth, the female youths in this country, get up, take the opportunity, build your skills, develop your dynamism, and open the doors. Don't wait for the doors to be opened for you. Doors to opportunity. We will campaign and advocate for gender issues to be addressed, gender in inequality issues to be addressed. We'll continue to campaign for that. But we are also saying that use your collective agency, your numbers, move. And that's what the president was saying. Use your collective agency, your numbers, use that and move forward. Think, work through it and open the doors. President's communication was perfect. He sent the message out. And it takes a bold person to say that. In that woman deliver a audience. He was bold and his position was perfect. That is what need, women need to be told. We shouldn't just sit there and cry about our problems, our issues, and that we are doing advocacy. Someone needs to tell her, do go beyond advocacy. Take that into your hands. Take that action into your hands. You have the, the, uh, you have the knowledge, you have the skills, you have the numbers. You can mobilize. So what it, I was happily about his communication. Haji Alima Mahama is lo local government minister. Well, the third speaker was the Foreign Affairs Minister Shelly Ayokoboche, who describes as unfortunate attempts by some activists to what he said, what she describes as, uh, to score what she describes as political point on this issue. We can decide to be ostriches and bury our heads in the sand and say that all is well and that we are doing all that we need to do to get our numbers up. But I tell you that if we do not act, if we are not fired up, government will put in all the policies. Government will put in all the laws. And yet nothing will change. I am surprised that all these people who are being very negative about his comments are doing so. I thought that this was rather something that would give us um, food for thought. Rather calling him names when during his term, his first term as president, he has 25 or 26 members of parliament who he supported. It could have been much more out of the 37 that we have, the female members of parliament. 
Shelly Ayakobochi is a foreign affairs minister. Well, let's have uh, let's have a quick conversation on this. Joining me on the line is Michelle McKinney Hammond. He's a best selling she's a best selling author, an Emmy award winning TV host. She's also an international speaker. Michelle, thank you for your time this uh, afternoon here on the show. Now. Uh, the, I've just played three ministers, three female ministers who are responding to some of the criticisms or if you like critique of what the president said at the Women Deliver um, uh, uh, conference in, in, in Canada. They believe that the women movement in Ghana at the moment is dead. And they think that comments like these, bold comments like what the president has made, are the things that that are needed to revive the women's movement in Ghana. What do you make of that? I agree. I did not take offense at his comment. You know, men are result-oriented, and they always look at the bottom line of what is really needed to accomplish the task. So I don't think that he was, you know, disqualifying anyone from the work that had already been done. But I believe that he was challenging women to get themselves together, garner support among one another, and put women more into political positions because, as he said, those decisions are made at the seat of decision makers. Therefore, we have to infiltrate the area of decision making in order to truly get decisions made. We have to understand realistically that people at the decision making table have their own agendas when they arrive. And their agendas come first before those of other people who are just simply talking about them on the street. So it's very, very important to have your people in place and also engage those who are already there to champion your cause. That will not happen if we call this a contest of power. So women have to calm down, grow thick skin, decide what their strategy is for mobilizing their efforts to be more in the place of decision making and championing and engaging those who are already there to champion their causes. Otherwise, I question what your agenda is for your power. We all know that Amazon women still needed men in order to reproduce. So we can't just completely offend men and cast them off to the side and say we don't need them to accomplish our agenda. So while we are getting more women into the seat of position, we must engage the men who are already there and convince them to champion our cause of the fact that there is a certain background to the debate when the people the women advocates who say this comment was not uh was in bad taste when they say that we're coming from a background where women especially in africa and in in in, in west africa and ghana have been more or less relegated to the background there's a cultural context to it that makes it difficult for women to break through the glass ceiling and so comments coming from people like uh, the president, uh, who is also an AU uh, gender champion, it doesn't do well when it comes to representation because, uh, because this issue really boils down to representation. What do you make well, of people who say that? I would say that still, again, we should not be offended. He simply presented the reality. And even though he is an sort of culture, the world is rapidly changing, and I don't believe that's true anymore. I believe that if you become a prisoner of culture and choose to buy into the lies so that you sit down and complain and hope and wish, as he said, that you miss the opportunity to come up with divine strategies on how okay. to miss that case. Women are taking power all over the world, including Africa. But I believe that those with vision accomplish that. Those that come together and unite in commonality accomplish that. And I think that if we, we choose to say, well, we're in a culture that doesn't allow women, then we don't make any moves. We literally imprison ourselves. And that is no one's fault but us. So I believe that the mindset has to change, that we have to believe that all things are possible. I am an advocate not just for intelligence and physical uh, intelligence, but okay. also spiritual intelligence. Okay. Oh, well, hang yeah. on for me, um, uh, Michelle. I'm going to come back to you, but let's go to, go, let me go uh, bring in Edith. Edith Asimeni, who is joining us via Skype from Canada. She has been at the uh, Women Deliver Conference and uh, she's chairperson of Afrian Ghana. 
uh, is a global human rights advocate. Hello, Edith. I hope you can hear me. I can hear you perfectly, Edith, and your visuals are just uh, perfectly clear. What is your position your, to, uh, on what the president has said? Some people think that it was in bad taste. They think it will run down efforts of women who have toured, you know, to come this far. Others think, like Michelle on the line with us, think that, look, these are the truths that we need to hear to rise up and do what needs to be done. Right. So I, I, I guess people read the different meanings into it depending on where they stand, what power they hold, um, where they stand even in politics um, and what positions they hold um, in society. From an activist background and from generally from an African woman background, I mean I saw two African presidents on the stage. There was mm -hmm. the president of Kenya and there was my own president. Um, and. I, I could place this thing on two different balances. The president of Kenya clearly acknowledged that um, women were women had they, they were doing something. However, there were religious and cultural barriers that inhibited their progress. So he acknowledged an all-round challenge and also acknowledged the fact that look, there, there's something that has been done. However, there are also barriers. So yeah. how about we remove the barriers and then we watch this woman march forward? And then our president unfortunately for me only focused on the fact that there was not enough dynamism I think the reason why a lot of gender advocates have been upset is because of the use of the word not enough dynamism because we, mm. we we have seen we have seen a lot of situations in the country um it also depends on what where we think power actually lies i agree with the fact that decision making at government and parliamentary uh, or political level is extremely important but i have seen from my since i was 11 years as an as a, as a young advocate so now, working at community level up until national level advocacy to regional and global level advocacy, I have seen power in the hands of communities. I have seen communities change the way they bring up girls, change the way women um, women lead. Look at the way um, queen mothers have taken such powerful places in the community and are molding girls to become they, they have to be. But, but it you know, is. So, so power it, it, is at different levels. Right, it, it is. It's very it unfortunate. Yeah. Mm. If I could take you on, on, on that. So the point is that, and the point that the president made, the point that his ministers are making to back him, the point that Michelle is making here on the phone is that, yes, you have the power. You could, you could have this power at the community level. But at the community level, there is also people who are making decisions at the top, people who are making decisions at the political level, which happens to be at the top, say cabinet, parliament. He says those decisions, they, uh, those decisions trickle down and they impact on the things you do at the community level. So he's, he's saying that, well, this is about, it's about time you began moving and looking up there, targeting positions up there so that you can make decisions from up there because that is where the impact is, is made. I agree, Gifty, but you can also look at, look at it from this perspective. How many policies do we have in Ghana? And how many of them have actually been implemented? Where does implementation take place? Implementation takes place at community level. Yeah. Um, over the years, if you had followed through a lot of the policies, you realize that we have papers, we have documents, but implementation has been slow. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we have only focused on power at the top. Mm -hmm. And power at the top only puts papers together. Part at the top says they take the decision, and yes, yes, they make environment conducive for some of the things that we do. However, part at the top doesn't get the things done. The things get done at community level, whether okay. you like it or not. And so you, you realize that even at even within the Ghana Health Service, there's so much power lying in the hands of district health management systems. There's so much power, for instance, lying in the hands of community health nurses. You know, and, and this is the kind of power we are harnessing. And for us as gender advocates, and I, unfortunately in Ghana, there's a weird understanding of the word feminism. Uh, because the moment people hear feminism, all they think about is a woman who, who is attacking men. But there are a lot of feminists out there, a lot of gender advocates, including our own minister of gender, who are feminists in that they are people who are promoting the gender agenda. You know, and, and these are the things that we are looking at. Let's, okay. let's look at it from a multifaceted 
perspective rather than looking at it from one perspective from one perspective in a certain position okay. you 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 start to be biased okay and, so and unfortunately i think our ministers have been biased okay so 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 for you the president is looking at a one one part of the solution but for you it has to be a broader it must be holistic it has exactly. to be holistic michelle let me come to you and wrap up with you michelle um you've had this this is a young Ghanaian who works uh, i mean in, in 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 advocacy gender advocacy and she works at the community level she has come face to face with people uh, and i'm saying this because i've just reported from a conflict uh, area in Trepone and one of the things we wanted to do was to talk to women and children it was very difficult to get the women to talk to us the moment they see us they recline and they expect that their men will do the talking so it was very difficult I'm saying this to buttress the fact that um, Edith who I've just spoken to is has been working especially in that part of the country he's seen she has seen how much work there is to be done when it comes to empowering women to get them up there so she's saying it's not about saying let's climb women all the way to the top because you can still be at the top and make the decision but it will not reflect on the uh, in the communities if we don't work at bringing the women up in the communities themselves and that's why comments like what the president made uh, is not necessarily what we need at this moment michelle yes again i feel that when one person has an agenda and someone answers the agenda if their agenda is not mentioned they feel it's been dismissed i don't okay. think community level and, and being in politics are exclusive issues both are needed okay. both are partners mm -hmm. in getting this job done so i don't think that he was throwing community work under the bus he was just saying if you want to get quicker faster policies in place they come from the seat of decision makers. That does not dismiss the responsibility of community workers and the factions that are already working together to put various causes. I think that they have to work together. Okay. I wrote a book called The Power of Being a Woman, as the out there in the store or something. But I talk about the influence and power of women to get things done. What I don't want to see is this major line drawn in the sand between the two. Okay. I love the fact that our country mm -hmm. has this to call T for T because the work has to be done to teach men the value of women as well. So it is a huge effort with many factors. So let's not get stuck on one part of it. Okay. Let's not dismiss the other okay. parts of it. Okay. He was giving one solution. Okay. That's fine. Right. As far as you're concerned, well, if the other side is too uh, is too simplistic, then the other side is equally simplistic. Well, we'll put both together, and then we get exactly. some results. That is uh, Michelle Hammond. She's an uh, she's a uh, she's an author, best-selling and Emmy award-winning uh, writer. There. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Michelle, for your time this afternoon here on the show. But let me wrap up with you, Edith, um, uh, who, who who is joining us via Skype in in uh, from Canada. Egypt, uh, did I just call you Egypt? Oh dear Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Edith, congratulations. So we understand that you had won the, your, you and your team, the Afrian Ghana, won the uh, Amplified Change pitch and with, 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 a, with a movement on fighting sexual and gender based violence in Ghana. Uh, tell us briefly what this means to the work you do here in Ghana. Right, okay. So um, basically, the, the winning of this pitch is actually a skill to what we have been discussing. It is bringing a balance between what takes, you know, the, what takes, what happens at the top, and then what happens at community level. So bringing a balance, and which is actually what we are hoping uh, we see more of from our president and many gender advocates and ministers. Uh, but the the amplified change grant was mainly to award women-led um, organizations and networks. Um, that that sort to do some work on challenging social norms and doing advocacy to change um, some really strong cultural practices. So, um, Ampli, uh, African Ghana, which is the African Youth and Adolescent Network of Population and Development, so which is a network, an umbrella body of about 40 youth led organizations in Ghana, um, proposed a pitch on ending sexual harassment and assault. Um, under the major discussion on ending sexual and gender-based violence in Ghana. 
uh, because we have seen that usually when people come out openly to report cases of sexual assault and harassment, maybe mm. they, they may have gone through the system and didn't get the right response. So yeah. maybe take up on take through on social media. People tend to vilify them. So how do we generally start a campaign, a strong movement? To let people understand the issues of consent, to let people understand that, especially girls and women, because they are the most vulnerable when it comes to uh, sexual and gender based violence, understand that if I do not want to be touched, you know, no, no one should touch me. Harassment and um, that has taken place in schools over the yeah. over the years. You know about GS and the policy mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. moving teachers instead of sacking them. All of those things. How do we ensure that there's a strong campaign to start a national debate on it? Um, and then there's some sort of call to action at the bigger level where we see all right. the, the the few dynamic women um, at the top. There. And then, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, I, Edith, uh, unfortunately, we run out of time. We need to do some sports. But mm -hmm. Edith, congratulations to you and to your team. And we hope that people Thank like you. you will begin to will, will continue to inspire a lot of the young people, especially those uh, in, you focus uh, a lot more in the northern region. And I think it's a great way uh, like there's a great actually we are like national we right have, um, right but for me I'm, I'm, ma I'm making a passionate yeah. appeal for you to focus more a lot more oh. on the north <laughs> because right, okay. yes because i think that there's a great deal of impacts that you can make there on the women and the, and the young the, the young girls there so it is congratulations Thank you. Edith Asameni, the uh, Afrian, she's with Afrian, and they've won a, a, a uh, they've won a competition that helps them to you know focus more on sexual assault. She's just been talking to us about this. Let's